Hello children, this is Seema Singh again with a new video. I have already the completed the lesson, The Happy Prince. Okay, so I am reading so that you can also read it at home without any difficulty. You can pronounce the word correctly. So I am reading. Let's start with the first section. Okay, let's start. There was a prince who had everything he wanted. So he was never sad. His people called him Happy Prince. When the prince died, his people had made a statue for him. The statue was made of lead covered in gold. The eyes was made of blue gems and in his sword was a big red gem. The statue was put up on top of the tall pillar in the middle of the town. Next paragraph I am reading. In that country, the winter was very cold. So, every autumn the swallow flew away to warmer place. This year, one little swallow was late. The night he came to the town. He landed on the top of the tall pillar right between the feet of the happy prince. The little swallow was just settling down to keep when he felt a drop of water. He looked up to see tears falling from the prince's eyes. Why are you crying? asked the swallow. Because of all the unhappy things I can see from here, said the prince. What can you see? asked the swallow. Far away in the small town lives a poor woman, said the prince. Her little boy lies ill in the bed, but his mother has no money for the medicine. He will surely die. Little Sol swallow, will you take her the red gem from my sword? It can save her son's life. So the swallow plucked out the gem and flew off with it to the woman's house. The boy was tossing around in the bed. His mother was so tired she had fallen asleep with his head on the table. The swallow put the red gem beside her. Okay, now come to page number 65. Then he flew back to the happy prince. It's funny, he said, but I don't feel any cold anymore. This, that's because you did a good deed, said the prince. All the same, the swallow still wanted to fly away, away to the warm land where his brothers and sisters had gone. So that night, he said to prince, goodbye, I'm off now. Re I'm reading the second section, children, for you. Little swallow replied the prince, don't go yet. I can see a young man in the bare room where there is no fire. He is trying to write but his hand is too cold to hold the pen. And he has nothing to eat. Take one of my eyes. They are made of blue gems. But I cannot do that, cried the swallow. Please do as I ask, begged the prince. So the swallow plucked out one of the gem from the statue's eyes and flew it to the young man. He dropped the gem in the bunch of flowers on the table. When the young man saw it, he was so pleased that he forgot he was hungry and went on with his work. Now I can pay my rent and buy some food, he said. Back flew the swallow to tell the prince the good news. And now, goodbye, he added. Turn the page. Don't go yet, pleaded the prince. Look down there. Do you see that little girl? She was trying to sell matches, but her, ha her hands were so cold that she dropped down in the wet. And now they are of no use. Her father will scold her when she gets home. You must pluck out the gem from my other eyes and give it to her. But if I do that, you won't be able to see at all, cried the swallow. You will be blind. Please do as I say, begged the prince. So the swallow took the blue gem and dropped it in the little girl's hand. How pretty! She smiled when she saw it and she ran off home to give it to her father. Once more the swallow flew back to the prince. I cannot leave you now that you are blind. I will stay with you and you can use my eyes to see. So children, we have finished the first two stanzas. Let's start with the third section. 
The prince wanted the swallow to fly over to the town and tell him what he saw. One day, the swallow saw two little boys sitting under the bridge trying to keep each other warm. Along came the policeman and told them to go home. He did not know what that they do, do they had no home to go. They just got up, went out hand in hand in the into the rain. When he heard this, the prince was very sad. I have no gems left, but my clothes are made of gold. You must pluck off a bit and give it to those poor children. Every day the swallow saw someone who needed help and before long all the gold on the prince had given away. He stood on the top of the pillar looking dull grey but the faces of the poor children were no longer white. Their ticks were red and their thin arms and legs grew nice and round. They had no longer had to beg for bread. Then the snow came. The poor little swallow got colder and colder. But he could not leave the prince. At last, he knew that his end had come. Goodbye, dear prince, he whispered Anne as he fell at the statue's feet. Goodbye, replied the prince, and something broke inside him. It was the heart. The next day, the mayor and the councillor passed by the pillar and looked up at the statue. Dear me, how shabby our prince looked, they cried. It seems to have lost all his gems and someone has stolen his clothes too. And look, there is a dead bird at his feet. We cannot have this here. It must be taken away at once. We did better take the statue down too, said another counsellor. We will put up a better one in its place. Whose shall we put this? This time, mine of course, said the mayor. They took down the prince statue and melted the lead to make the new one. But the workman found the broken heart inside that would not melt. So they threw it on the uh, dust heap where the little bird swallow was lying. That night, God told the angels, Bring me the two most precious things in the town. They brought him the broken heart and the dead swallow. And the God said, You are right, the little bird shall sing in my garden of paradise and the happy prince shall praise my name for ever. So this poem, this chapter is by Oscar Wilde. Okay children, I have read the whole chapter for you. You can try reading it out so that you don't forget the reading right okay children this is all for today see you tomorrow with another video till then goodbye